Hello everyone, my name is Andrea Lisette Ramirez Flores and today I am going to talk about the simple past tense and the biographies of Salvadoran poets and writers. First, let me talk to you about the simple past. The simple past is a verb tense that is used to talk about things that happened or existed before now. Imagine someone asks what your brother Wolfgang did while he was in town last weekend. For example, Wolfgang entered a hula hop contest or he won the silver medal because he played in that contest of hula hoop. The simple past then shows that you are talking about something that has already happened. Unlike the past continuous tense, which is used to talk about past events that happened over a period of time, the simple past tense emphasizes that the action is finished, like already happened. For example, Wolfgang admired the way the light glinted of his silver medal. You can also use the simple past to talk about a past state of being, such as the way someone felt about something. This is often expressed with the simple past tense of the verb to be and an adjective, noun, or prepositional phrase. Like Wolfgang was proud of his hula hoop victory, or the contest was the highlight of, the, of his week. Now, to learn um, more about the past and also about our history and our poets, we will read some biographies, biographies of Salvadoran personalities. The first one, is Claudia Lars. Claudia Lars was born in Armenia, El Salvador on December the 20th of 1899 as Margarita del Carmen Bran Vega. was a Salvadoran point. She died in San Salvador in 1974. She was the daughter of Peter Patrick Brannon and Carmen Vega Celayandia. Celayandia. Her parents were Peter Patrick Brannon who was Irish, and Carmen Brannon Vega, Celayandia, who was Salvadoran. During her early years, she was friends with Consuelo Sunsin, the future wife of Antoine de San Exupery, if you didn't know that. She started her education at home and later studied at the Colegio La Asunción de Santa Ana as a teenager. Uh, the general Juan Jose Cañas, who got a booklet of poems, of poems written by her, published the book without Claudia's authorization under the title of Triste Mirajes. In 1919, Claudia started a relationship with Nicaraguan poet Salomón de la Selva, but her parents ended the relationship by sending Claudia to the United States. In the United States, Claudia met her first husband, Leroy F. Pierce Cohen. Claudia worked as a Spanish teacher at the famous Ber Berlitz School in Brooklyn. Claudia returned to El Salvador with her husband in 1927. After Leroy was, was appointed United States Consul, the same year she gave birth to her only son, Roy Beers Brown. Claudia became friends with the other poets and writers in El Salvador. Among those were Salarue, Alberto Guerra Trigueros, Serafín Quiteño, and Alberto Masferrer. In 1933, she began using the pseudonym Claudia Lars. In 1934, her first book was published, Stars in the Well. At the beginning of the next decade, Claudia Lars won second place in the 1941 Floral Games in Guatemala thanks to her work, Sonnets of Michael. Then came The Glass of House in Santiago de Chile, Romances of North and South in 1946, City Under My Voice, which was the winner of the events commemorating the fourth centenary of the title of City San Salvador. Claudia was appointed as cultural attaché to the Embassy of El Salvador in Guatemala. She went to Guatemala in 1948, where she met her second husband, Carlos Amayoa Chinchilla, who was divorced in 1967. Mm. However, before getting married, she endured a hectic life in which she worked packing peaches in the United States, translated stories for Walt Disney and Salvador Salvadorans working together to anti-face this newspaper. The second one is Manlio Argueta. Manlio was born in, nine, in 24 of November, 1935. He's a Salvadoran writer, critic, and novelist. 
Although he's a primarily a poet, he's best known in the English speaking world of his, for his novel, One Day of Life, Un Día en la Vida. He was born in San Miguel, El Salvador. Argueta was, has stated that his exposure to poetic sounds began during his childhood and that his foundation in poetry stemmed from his childhood imagination. His writing career began with poetry produced at the age of 13. He was strongly influenced by the world literature he read as a teenager and cites Pablo Neruda and Garcia Lorca as his primary influences. He later studied law at the University of El Salvador, but concentrated on his poetic work. In 1956, although he was re relatively unknown at the time, he won first prize at the Flora Game of San Miguel. Sponsored by the Alberto Mas Ferrer so Society of Professors, during the 60s, he began to produce more fiction and became involved with the Generación Comprometida, a literary group with a leftist political orientation founded by Italo López Vallecillos. All of its members were great admirers of John Paul Sartre and existentialism. The group sought to create social change to benefit the lower classes, but they also initiated uh, initiated the rediscovery of native cultural heritage. Roque Dalton was perhaps its main known member. Because of his writing criticizing the government, he was forced to go to self-exile in Costa Rica. He was there for, um, from 1972 until 1993 and worked primarily as a teacher. He also held guest professorship throughout North America and Europe, including the chair of contemporary literature at San Francisco State University. Since returning to El Salvador, he was held the position of Director of National and International Relations at the university. A characteristic of his writing style present in the majority of his works is the use of Salvadoran Spanish vernacular and slang. He considers this a way to express and preserve some of El Salvador's cultural identity. Roque Dalton. Roque Antonio Dalton Garcia was born in San Salvador in on May the 14th of 1935. He was born as Roque Antonio Garcia, better known as Roque Dalgo. He was a Salvadoran poet, ensayist, journalist, communist activist, communist activist, and intellectual. He is considered one of Latin America's most compelling poets. He wrote emotionally strong, sometimes sarcastic, and image loaded works dealing with life, death, love, and politics. Even though he never received an academic degree, he took part in higher education at the University of Chile and the University of El Salvador, where he studied law. He also visited the National Autonomous University of Mexico. While in Chile, he began to study Mar Marxism and on returning to El Salvador, he became a significant player in local politics. He became working with poetry after helping found the University Liter Literary Circle. He joined the Communist Party of El Salvador. He was imprisoned in 1956 and 1960s for incident revolt during the presidency of Jose Maria Lemus. In 1961, he was exiled from El Salvador, spending 1961 in Mexico, then moving to Cuba, where most of his poetry was published and where he completed his development as an author, but also in Mexico and Czechoslovakia. In Cuba, he became involved in the culture and received military training after the Bay of Pigs invasion. After returning to El Salvador in 1965, he was arrested and interrogated by the, an, ag an agent of the Central Intelligence Agency. In 1969, he returned to Cuba and then Prague to work as correspondent for the International Review, Problems of Peace and Socialism. In the same year, he won a poetry prize, Casa de las Americas, for his book, Taberna y Otros Lugares. After leaving Cuba, Dalton became involved in the Salvador Civil War, joining the People's Revolutionary Army in 1973. In this place, or in the ERP, he found himself in a serious internal dispute with leader Alejandro Rivas Mira, who was becoming an influential leader of the armed group. As a consequence, the leadership of the ERP decided to execute him. He is remembered for his bohemian lifestyle and the jovial, irreverent personality reflected in his literary work, as well as his commitment to, so to social causes in El Salvador. His work is diverse, going beyond the influences of his Marxist belief. He is considered one of the most influential Salvadoran writers. 
but famously, he has received recognition as Hijo Meritísimo and Poeta Meritísimo by the Salvadoran government and an honorary doctorate degree from the Universidad de El Salvador. Then we have Salarre. Luis Salvador Efraín Salazar Arre, known as Salarre, was a Salvadorian writer, poet, and painter. Born in Sonsonate and on October the 22nd of 1899. To a well-off family, Salarre trained as a painter on the Corcoran School of Art in Washington, DC from 1916 to 1919. He then returned to El Salvador and, and in 1922 married fellow painter Celia Larde, with whom he had three daughters. In the late 1920s, he worked as editor for their newspaper, Patria, owned by, Almer by Alberto Masferrer, an important Salvadoran intellectual. To fill in blank spaces in the newspaper, Salarue wrote a series of short stories which were collected 30 years later as Cuentos de Cipote. This and the stories in Cuentos de Barro became Salarue's most popular and enduring work reflecting an idealized version of rural life in El Salvador and making him one of the founders of the new wave of Latin American folkloric narratives. However, few readers understand that the stories in Cuentos de Barro were an ingenious literary feat of Salarre, by disguising through a subtle, subtle way of a non-standard highlight intensive language and style, he was able to recall to readers a bloody massacre carried out by the Salvadoran dictator president, General Maximiliano Hernández Martínez in 1933, without the authorities being able to interpret Salarre's defamation of that leader. Salarre lived in the United States from 1947 to 1951 while representing his country in diplomatic post. He died in Los Planes de Renderos near San Salvador and is buried and he was buried, buried in the Cementerio de los Ilustres. Thank you so much for paying attention to this um, presentation. I hope you have learned a lot and that the simple past and all of the stories and biographies from the people that we know uh, that we have here in El Salvador have a special place in your heart and mind. Thank you so much.